Hi there, I'm Louise Digby, registered nutritional therapist, and today I'm here to talk to you about good foods and bad foods. And the main thing that I want you to know is that there is no such thing as a bad food, and I'm going to explain why. Now, this is, on the face of it, might seem like I'm talking about, you know, very much a nutrition perspective, but actually, what we're focusing on is your mindset and the language that we use around food because the language that we use around food whether we're thinking it or whether we're saying it really impacts the way that we feel about food and our relationship with food and we can condition ourselves to have a better relationship with food by changing up the language that we use so when it comes to foods being good or bad or fattening or slimming or <laughs> they're not really the main ones I guess I was trying to think of other things that people might say but fattening and slimming and good and bad are probably the main ways that people would describe certain foods and you know it's the question that I get all the time from my clients is this good is this bad is this okay is this not okay um, is this allowed is this, you know, can I have this as a treat? And all of, the, however you describe it, you're c trying to categorize food as either healthy or unhealthy, good for you, bad for you. And we really need to try and stop doing that because it's really not as black and white as that. There is no food that only does good for you and there's no food that only does bad for you. The way that foods are made up is that, you know, there are some foods that are, well, all foods have properties that do us good. Things that are going to give us what we need, be that calories or nutrients, or maybe even just feel good factor. And there are always going to be components of foods that cause us problems, which may be to do with the balance of fats that's in them. It might be to do with the amount of sugar that's in them. It could be to do with um, other things, like there are things that we call anti-nutrients. And these are not necessarily things that are going to be in foods that you would expect them to be in. So for example, now we tend to think about foods like beans and pulses as being healthy but they contain what are known as lectins and these are what we would call anti-nutrients and for some people these anti-nutrients are problematic they can actually stop you from absorbing the nutrients from the food and for some people that causes problems and for others it doesn't so some foods that we think of as being really healthy have these anti-nutrients in. And even foods that we think of as being really, really healthy, like the, the super foods like blueberries and that kind of thing, even though there's loads and loads of beneficial properties to them, there are things in them that aren't going to, to do you good. Because plants are designed to protect themselves and protect themselves from being damaged by animals. So they have things in them to defend themselves and those things can be damaging for us. And the thing is, all foods have an element of harm causing components and have an element of health giving components. So what do you do? Well, you stop categorizing foods as good and bad and you start looking at foods as what has it got things that are going to be beneficial for me what is this food going to give me and looking at it in terms of need in rather than wholly good or wholly bad because there is just no such thing so when people say to me is this yogurt good it's like well you know it depends let's look at what's in it let's look at you you know do you have a dairy intolerance or do you need more calcium or do you need to keep your sugars to a minimum do you need more protein in your diet it's it's never as black and white as this is good and this is bad and what we want to do is stop trying to use that that terminology because 
when we say, oh, I've been bad or I've eaten this and this is bad, then, you know, subconsciously we can start to infer that we are bad and, and we are not good enough because we've made these bad choices. You might not be consciously thinking this, but that's the effect that it can start to have. And it can really start to grind you down. And, you know, many women that I've worked with come to me, you know, really with quite low confidence and really you can just tell they're quite worn down from all of the dieting and trying to figure out what to do. And many of them are really successful women. You know, they've had successful careers, raised families, successful relationships, go on lovely holidays and, you know, have ticked a lot of boxes, but they just can't figure out this food factor, the relationship with food and really master food and their nutrition and their diet. And that can really leave them feeling like a bit of a failure. And when we are thinking about food and ourselves or, you know, that what we've eaten as being good or bad, that really feeds into us feeling like a failure. So if we stop trying to think, is this good or is this bad? And instead just trying to focus on what your body needs and choosing things that are more nourishing as opposed to things that are not so nourishing. So I hope this has been helpful. And really the main takeaway today is to stop using the words good or bad and try to think of foods as nourishing or less nourishing. Um, and that will look slightly different for everyone. This is something that we get into more in our program, The Nourish Method. We dig more into the language that we use with foods and also into things like limiting beliefs around food, around ourselves and our abilities and things like comfort eating and emotional eating as well. So again, if this has been helpful, make sure that you give this video a like and I'll be back again this week with some more posts around the mindset piece to help you to start shifting that relationship with food. Have a good week.